My name is Linda Kellum. I'm the organizer of the Help an Accidental Government Information Librarian webinar series for the NCLA. Um, Hannah is the Geospatial and Earth Sciences Librarian at the University of New Hampshire. She received her MLIS from the University of Chapel Hill, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and is the current president of the Geoscience Information Society. She is an advocate for data visualization, science communication, geoscience education, and developing critical thinkers using information literacy. Her research interests include using remote sensing and geospatial technologies to solve problems in the natural world. And we're very excited to have you with us today. So Linda, that was a great introduction. And hopefully you guys are all excited about this topic as much as I am. I love talking about um, geolo geology, geological materials, and really anything that has to do with maps, which if you are in that case and you feel similar that I do, then you may probably have um, a a career ahead of you in as being a, a, a map maker or a, a map librarian somewhere like that. Um, Linda asked me to talk a little bit about finding geological materials through the USGS and um, it was quite fortunate because um, I've recently done a lot of some research for a faculty member for their class on, on this very same topic. So I was able to bring it to life a little bit for you. So we're going to be talking about a lot of different resources. And luckily, this is recorded. So everything you hear, you'll be able to see later. And there's also a link at the very end of the presentation for you to go over. So um, don't worry if, if you get overwhelmed. Some of the resources we'll be talking about are the National Map Viewer the USGS National Map, Geologic Maps Catalog Search, USGS TopoView and MapView, and the USGS Publications Warehouse. So the question that I had uh, last, uh, last fall was from one of my faculty members who asked me, um, his students were doing a, a, a research project for their introduction to field methods class. They wanted to use government documents, specifically USGS materials, to find information about their hometowns. And that included they wanted to find maps, they wanted to find the elevation of where their hometown was. They wanted to find out the land cover, um, what the watershed would look like, the watershed boundaries, any certain, certain water features. Um, if there was mining in that area, where the nearest mines might be, and what type of minerals are, are um, from that area. They wanted to find some old and some new topographic maps, and also recent publications from the USGS that had to do with that area. Um, so this is a great, great way to transition into why we are looking at USGS materials, um, so many of them, to answer just this one question. Find information about your hometown. So we're going to step through what I did um, in this class. So one of the first resources that we looked at was the National Map Viewer. Um, also something similar to it, it's also called the National Map Viewer Streamer. The National Map of the US Geological Survey is a public available resource. Um, accessing geospatial base map data for all of the geological community from a um, certain location. And the national map is great because you can find a whole series of information from eight primary themes. These, the, all these data include things like elevation, geographic names, boundaries, land cover. Um, and you can also use the national map viewer to look for US topos and historical topographic map products. And I'll get a little bit to that in a moment. So this is just an illustration, again, of all, very many different resources that you can find in the National Map Viewer. Boundaries, elevation, land cover, these are all different layer sets that, they, that the USGS uses. If you go to viewer.nationalmap.gov, there's a lot going on on this page, but it should be pretty easy to find on the um, right-hand side. You can see where it says Find Data. You can um, zoom right in to get into the National Map Viewer. You can also, if you click, click onto it, the, on the left-hand side, it says TNM Download Client. This is the, one of the resources that we'll be using today. It's pretty easy. It's interactive. So this is what it looks like when you first get in. It's a viewer.nationalmap.gov slash basic. Um, the download cl client is built on modern web technologies. It's interactive. You, you can do a very simple approach of downloading content from the National Map product. product. Um, there's a lot of different data sets. You can see towards the very top, it says U.S. Topo and Historical Topographic Maps. Remember I mentioned that there's um, a couple of ways to get those two resources, and this is one of them. And then a whole list of different sets of data. Let me zoom in a little bit closer so you see. Some of the data sets, so these are, um, the answer to well, that reference question is embedded in a lot of these different types of data. 
you can see that the data sets are selected with different product extents and formats. Um, you, um, some of them are by a foot or a meter imagery. There are um, a lot of different types that are coming from different products that the USGS has. So we see the geographic named information systems, which allows you to look up geographic names if you're not quite sure the actual variation. There's also topographic maps and structures. Structures could be anything from a graveyard to um, knowing where an airport is. So I'm just going to go over two particular data sets to answer this question, one that is um, used often in the National Map Viewer. It's the National Hydrographic Data Set. Um, it's a really fun resource so that to use. You can actually um, get the right in, zoom and pan to, into the map, draw a box to the area, and get to know the area of water features. There's, it's a comprehensive surface water feature area for um, items on a topographic map, for example, lakes and ponds and dams and stream gauges. Um, you can trace the flow lines of what's going on, and you can also look at the boundaries. So the boundaries are not just um, for a state area or a country area, but it would be um, environmentally focused, say, for example, a watershed. Here we are um, back at that national map viewer, and you can click on the, on the left-hand side, click on the hydrography, and zoom right into an area. In this case, we're going to look at the Oroville Dam area. I don't know if many of you have heard about what's going on at um, the Oroville Dam. It's perfectly, permanently closed right now. In February, there was a main um, emergency spillway that happened in California, and over um, 1,800 people living there had to be relocated. So we're just going to use this as an example. We can go zoom into it, find that data set, click, in, uh, click on find a look at the metadata, excuse me, look at the metadata, and actually download that data set. Also, we have the National Land Cover data set. This is also something you can find in the National Map Viewer. It serves as a definitive land-based 30 meter resolution land cover database for the nation. In fact, this little image right here that you're seeing of the United States may look um, familiar to you because it's coming right from the USGS. It provides a spatial reference and descriptive data for characteristics of land service um, surface, such as thematic class, so areas for urban development, agriculture, forest, um, canopy cover. Um, you can also find out the per percentage of change that has happened over time. And this is used to determine ecosystem health, understand the effects of climate change, and develop land management policy. So you can also see the change from now and then from different um, time periods. So some of the land cover goes back to 1992, the most recent is 2011, and it's now on a five-year product cycle. So this is what it looks like when you're in the National Mac Viewer. You can zoom into a certain area. This is California. Um, pro I'm clicking on products at the very top um, of the page, and you can see the list of products that come up. And click on the shopping cart to be able to view that cart. It goes into your cart, and now you have entire land um, uh, national land cover database uh, preview of California, and you can download that material. And it looks a little bit like this. This is the summary and the metadata that's associated with it. That looks a lot like California to me. Um, then there's also the National Map Streamer, really great resource and just kind of fun and interactive if you're um, interested in kayaking, canoeing, things like that. You can trace the rivers and the streams in the U.S. to see where they go. Um, that includes weather data, stream flow, and um, some really great base maps for you to understand um, the watershed area. Area. So um, here's the streamer slide. You see lots of um, high-profile rivers right here. And if you see the very top, I've ta clicked and um, started typing in the word Orville. And this is for me to find out more information about the Orville Dam area. I can also trace downstream to see the effects of where that river is with the dam being affected. So let's look. I've clicked on Orville. And now I've got a, um, I've hovered over that trace report button to display a menu with the printable trace report options here. And you can choose a new web page. This is on the very top side, it says trace report. There's a couple of different things you can do is by clicking on the trace upstream, you can see how um, the river is traced in that way. Moving on to topographic maps. I think probably everybody here knows about topographic maps and what we have av available through the USGS. They are probably the central resource the USGS has, and probably um, one of the ones that you're, you have all come here today to learn about. 
Um, there are at least four different ways to find topographic maps. Now remember that you can find them through the National um, Map Viewer that we were just looking at. But there's several other resources that you can use. Um, the, there's a map locator, which you can use through the USGS Map Store. If you haven't been there, you can try it out. You can do a query application that's um, through uh, text-based through a product called GeoNames. And then you can also use um, a, a something called TopoView and the Historical Topographic Map Collection. So I'm just going to dive into those. Um, if you're really interested in that overview that I was telling about with the four or five different ways of finding topos, there's some really fun um, interactive story maps that um, USGS just did through ESRI. This entire presentation could be um, a part of that. It's a fun little interactive um, slide, and you can go through and see a little bit of the history of the, of the story map. So here's TopoView. Um, for those of you who have never heard of TopoView, it's OK. It's fairly new. It's a really exciting way of um, enabling a historical exploration of um, all the USGS historical topographic map products. So in the 1800s, the USGS began to map the nation's topography. And now they have all these different data sets from different, uh, and maps from different levels of detail. And finding them for a certain area is very difficult. So they have compiled all this res these resources into one place. And you can use it to look for different uh, land use purposes, see how, how cities have changed over time, or what boundaries have changed over time. Um, it's an online tool. You can access and download all these maps for free. Um, it's about uh, 178,000 topographic maps dating back to 1880. There's a lot of different formats you can also download the maps from, including Geo PDF and GeoTIFF. JPEG is very popular. And also KMZ. For those of you that don't use it as often, it's a type of format used to import data into Google Earth. This is what TopoView looks like. This is just the overall page when you first Get to it. You can actually start by entering a location in the search box. So if you look at the very top right-hand side, it says enter a location. You can, um, and the map will guide you to that place. You can pan, enable, and actually zoom around with your um, mouse to, to different areas. And I could be doing this live, but it, I've got a limited time. And if we have time towards the end, I'll, I'll try to show you. Um, for each map, you can, there's a variety of different file formats that you can use and, and, and tap on. Um, you can also see the default map scale right on the far right-hand side. And it allows you to easily change the map scale that you're looking for, as, as well as the year at the very top, from 1880 to 2010. So just diving in a little bit closer, this is San Francisco area. You can see that um, there are eight maps that came up for that specific area over the time um, period. I'm looking at a map from 1964. Um, when you click on the map, the map counter shows the number of maps that were published, and that is helpful to you if you're looking for a certain year. And you can change that slider as you'd like to. If you want to get more information on the maps, you can view the maps in a map record table, and it looks like that. It's a nice little um, table of all the maps from that certain area. Um, and you can use the map locator icon um, to, to zoom in also if you are looking for a certain area. Um, and it's nice is you can actually get a um, just download. It says there's four different um, file formats. You can easily just click on that and get the file map format that you're interested in. In this case, if I wanted a JPEG of the area, I could just click on it, download it, and it would come right up. There's also this historical um, topographic map explorer resource. And um, though there's several access points from the USGS online database to find and use USGS topographic maps, this is my absolute favorite. If you've never used it, I say um, take a note right now and, um, and, and make sure to play with this when you're done watching this presentation. It's a fun resource. And I'll be honest, not a month goes by that I don't point somebody to this resource. It is a fun way to really see um, the, the, how um, an area has changed over time. It has the least amount of navigation clicks. It's user-friendly. It has a lot of sliders. It's, it's fun and interactive. Going into it, if you type in an area, in this case I typed in Palo Alto, um, you can actually search, um, do find a place, and you type in your search, and you view the topographic maps in an area. And if I have a moment, let me see if I can bring it up live. We're going to try Greensboro, North Carolina, because that's where Linda is. And many of you from North Carolina area I zoomed right into Greensboro. And if I just click on an area, you'll see at the very bottom all these different 
topographic maps are going to click up, uh, click on, and you can actually scroll around and see the opacity change. And I can choose another one, and it'll overlay on top. Again, I can scroll and change. It's a really great resource. And you can go and actually just download the map, click, and it'll pop up. We won't do that today. So let's um, look at also what you're probably here for is actually finding geological resources. It's really, really imperative as a uh, librarian or a government documents person to really be able to help people find uh, USGS materials that are, have um, geologic features. Some of these these uh, resources are really, really exciting. You can you can access these from a lot of different places. There's a National Geologic Map Database project and also some mineral resources that you may be asked to learn about. So some of the reasons why you might be asked about geologic resources, um, maybe just as something as simple as somebody wanting to do bedrock analysis if they're doing earthquake data, looking at mineral resources, um, wanting to know more about mining, uh, mines in the area or um, what resources are available in natural, in the natural environment. Geologic hazards are big, avalanches, tsunamis, earthquakes, etc., cetera, um, and their impact also on climate change. And um, if somebody's looking for USGS materials, they may be specifically looking for reports that have come out, um, and this is a nice way to find it by geography. Um, resource development, but also shoreline change. So you can see a lot of changes in shoreline, and this is a great geological resource, um, both the um, uh, the map view will get to the table view and the catalog to, to look at some of these publications that are coming out. So here we are at the National Geological Map Database. You can see the URL is ngmdb.usgs.gov. Kind of a fun, fun place to, to really start off. If this is the main page, but you'll actually see there's actually four different resources that are part of that product. There's um, something called the Topo View which is um, a really nice uh, way of looking for materials um, that are uh, historical. Um, there's the map catalog search, which I'll show you in just a moment. This map view, which is probably the most fun, interactive type of product that I've seen come out of the USGS in a long time. And that's that colorful map that's on the top um, side. And then something called the lexicon, it's also known as the Geolex. It's a national compilations of names and descriptions of geological units. So these four different products are all coming under one. So ha here's the National Geologic Map Database. Hopefully you can see there's a lot going on here. You can search by keyword, also by themes. There's this nice locate, um, locator bounding box image, and you'll see this consistent in a lot of U, um, USGS materials, where you can scroll in by a certain area and search by these different boundary co coordinates. And search by publisher, publication date, and map scale. Um, I use this re resource fairly often when somebody is looking for a certain um, hazard material. I want to know more about data from a certain areas, so, um, or if I'm looking for um, resources in the geochemical area. Uh, you can use these different themes um, to search. The, the National Geologic Map Database has this Geolex too, too. so if you're a geologist and you're looking for certain um, information by, um, by type, that is, um, by unit name, you can search by that. So that's the age range, stratigraphy, um, for example, or also um, other metadata that might be a, a formation type. So they give an example of Dakota, for example. You can search for all the different types of um, lexicon that has to do with the Dakotas. This is probably one other resource that you're probably excited to see. This is the map view. It's now part of this map catalogger, so it's made it easier so users can more easily find and view high-resolution map images. Um, and I'll try to do a live presentation if I can in a second here. You can do a lot of different um, searches here. You can look for bedrock, for superficial resources. You can use the slide scaler to act, search for, for different areas and understand the um, opacity for an area. Um, you can type in a certain area you're searching for and come up with a queryable result about that area. Just giving indications, so this is where us searching again for Oroville. And this is in California. It zooms right to that area. It's really pretty kind of overlay of the geologic area. And then from there, uh, you can click on the, there's a button on the far right hand side that allows you to look at all the publications in that view. These are ge geological publications that um, are from that um, database. 
this will be a list of them. And real quick, let me show you what that looks like live. And here's that query, queryable side. Go to location. I'm just going to type in Greensboro again. So it zoomed right on in. It's, so we can filter by scale. At the very top, we've got um, a filtering range. So we can um, look from different periods of, um, of scale. Then go to the actual catalog. So it's able to create a bounding box with more or less around Greensboro, North Carolina. Let me try that again. And I went to the catalog. And here's a list of publications for that area. And if you see, some of them have to do with, say, North Carolina, North Carolina. And this, this for example, let's talk about geological and um, mineral resources in Guilford County, which is where Greensboro, North Carolina is. It shows the bounding box and the availability of how you can download those resources. So USGS Mineral Resources, um, if you're really interested in finding about mines, mining, any sort of commodity that has to do with it, you want to dive into those. The National uh, Minerals Group, they put together over 700 publications annually, and they have several different mapping um, uh, tools that you can use to search by country, state, and commodity in this data portal. They also have some resources where you can search for um, mines, metallic, non-metal um, mineral resources, deposit names, commodities, deposit descriptions, production, resources, and other references. So you can Google for mineral resources online, but that will just, let me just show you, you want to click on the where it says mineral resources. And it will bring you up to this resource. And um, this is the mineral resources data system. Um, online resource for finding all those deposit informations. And you can also use this to find out where all the local mines are. It's also another resource that allows you to search by state, by country, um, and also by a commodity. So this is the National Minerals Information Center uh, web, um, website. It's the primary agency for collecting and analyzing non-fuel mineral information. This is also the same group that puts to out the, the annual mineral commodity summary uh, publication, which you may be familiar with. So this, um, this database, for example, looks at 85 commodities essential to the US economy. So in this case, I did a quick search for the word aluminum and came up with a bunch of different aluminum resources, the statistics um, um, annually. And they have it um, recently up and through 2017. But you can search by com um, commodity if you like. You can also go by state, state specific. Here we are with, again, this is um, a way for you to su subscribe to certain um, mineral information. If you're specifically interested in aluminum, you can um, subscribe to any new publications about that. Here is also the same database, but it um, allows you to look by country. And so if you're interested in, say, China and the minerals that are coming out of there, you can use this resource um, to do that. I just mentioned the Mineral Co Commodities Summary. This is a very popular resource that's coming out of this group. It's um, data sheets that come out um, in a five-year statistical method, and they have over 90 individual minerals and materials um, listed. Um, I have people asking for this you, um, fairly often, and I'm pretty sure you probably have a copy of this in your library. It's also available online through the USGS Publications Warehouse, which we'll get to in just a moment. Um, it's just a nice overview, too, and if you're interested in what's going on in your neighborhood, you may want to take a peek at this. So here's the, some information about the USGS Science Data Catalog, which is data.usgs.gov. This is mostly open source data, data that is available through the website. This is, these are data sets, again, so it's not um, the same type of geological information you may be um, as familiar with searching, or maybe you use this all the time. These are raw data sets that you can download, um, often in text file or other formats. You can see that there is a listing of some of the most frequently asked, um, accessed data on the, the site. includes the national map, which we just talked about, but all these other different data sets from a variety of different um, resources and places. When I'm in here, you can see that I'm just doing an overall search, there's um, thousands and thousands of places for you to search for scientific um, and geological data. The first data set that comes up is the USGS survey gap analysis. So this is um, a data set that also has a fun um, online map. I'm not going to talk about that today, but there is an um, interactive map that you can search for this data to, to look for um, uh, species as they're going extinct to see um, what's on the endangered um, list or has 
some sort of um, reason for being concerned for the environment. You can search um, by different keywords and also look at the cataloging um, holdings for certain um, states or countries or even the oceans. So doing a quick search for that Orville Dam area, we can search for it by geographic area. And so all I did was I panned in and clicked a bounding box around the dam and found 864 resources that have data sets from that area. Clearly marine data sets aren't going to be part of it. It's going to be more um, landlocked, but you can see a long list. Now on the far left-hand side, there's a filter by keywords area. You can see that there are ways to filter by these different um, material types. So here's another example. I just searched for all the geophysical surveys just from that area. And it, only a few came up, about five. Nothing, nothing that uh, was specifically about, uh, say, the, the dam breaking, because these were older resources. Um, one of the first ones that came up was from 1980. You can see it's about airborne uh, geophysical survey. All right, we're on number five. One of the, these, this is going to be a fun thing to talk about. You probably have heard of the USGS publications warehouse. It's probably one of the go-to resources for finding uh, USGS materials. Over 130,000 publications that were written by USGS scientists. The history of the USGS are ingested in the USGS publications warehouse. There, the resource itself used to be a little clunky to use, um, and there wasn't always a great way of searching for some of these resources. Now that it, asks, it acts as a uh, curation tool, also as a citation system, managing the links and managing um, the the scientist profiles about who's published what and actually linking out their publication. So it provides an index to all uh, official USGS authored publications. And these, this is a list of some of the current resources that are coming out of the Publications Warehouse. Some of them include data sheets and fact sheets and also open file reports. For those of you looking for that, um, that's one of a question that I get often is how do, how do you find um, these type of resources. There's also a popular map series that can be found. For example, geophysical physical, um, investigations or mineral investigations. Some of these um, map series can be easily searched um, through the advanced search. The basic search is pretty, pretty easy, um, and you can just search um, right on the front page where it says search for publication. This is just a string term, um, something like you would use in Google. Just type what you're searching for. Sometimes I'm asked what is the most popular resource that is in the uh, USGS Publications Warehouse. It's actually a resource from 1987. It's called Map Productions uh, Working Manual. Um, and it's one of the um, seminal resources in um, map production work. You could actually link to it if you're interested in later. But if we're actually searching for it, map production, click um, typing that in the search bar, you can see the paper will come up by the author. You can see the full text document is, is available by PDF, some plates that are evolved as well as abstract and some other information. So that was all in the advanced, um, the beginning search. But if you want to do advanced search, you can do a search for a few um, interesting things. Their beginning search allows you to search for title, year, publication name, series name, or report number. Very easy things if you are already have a citation available. But let's say you're looking for something a little bit more. You can use the advanced search to search for a few other resources. So here's what the, it looks like when you're in advanced search. If you see at the very top, it says search for publication. These are mostly just search terms. There's a few other things you can search for. Let's go um, look at them over. Contributing office. This is um, interesting for if you're specifically looking for a certain department or office. And you can click on the contributing office and search um, by that. If you're um, in a certain uh, geographical area, you want to know what your researchers or colleagues are working on, I would choose this. Just like many other USGS materials, you can do an area of interest, do a geographic bounding box around an area. Um, I can't tell you how happy this makes, you, makes me um, for searching USGS materials, just, li just like um, it's the, one of the easiest things to do. 
So here we are, just do a creative um, bounding box around one specific area of interest. This is San Francisco. And there's over uh, almost 2,500 results that have come up just from that geographic area. If, um, these, of course, are USGS-funded um, resources, not everything out there. But for looking for these type of government documents, it makes it easy. And then in the advanced search, you're able to search for author or by ORCID ID. Um, now, ORCID, if you're, if you're familiar with it, it allows you to search for those that have an open researcher and contributor ID. It's an alphanumeric number that is associated with certain authors. And it's now required for, um, by the USGS as of October 2016. Emily Wild, who is the USGS librarian in Denver, she has a pretty active account. She, this is her, her ORCID ID. You can actually look it up online. Uh, you can look to see other um, USGS author or funded publications through these. So I just pulled her ORCID ID, and in this, the search box, the event search, I searched by her ORCID ID. I could also search by her name, but it wouldn't be as thorough. So this is just a, a very fuzzy list of publications of 25 different resources that she has written. Um, you'll be able to download each one of them. Some other tips. I, I did promise some tips and tricks about using the USGS Publications Warehouse, since you're probably going to use this resource um, more frequently than others. Wild cards um, to find all a part of the word are not needed. It's crawlable by Google, so it doesn't do that same kind of wild card search that you are probably familiar with in other databases. Um, also, unfortunately, you can't do exact phrases. So you can't do a quotation around um, certain phrases like climate change or, um, or carbon di dioxide. However, there's a nice trick. Since all this content is indexed by Google, you can actually search Google for that content. So um, if you're not familiar with how to do that, you can just type in the, the phrase or that you're looking for um, and, the, and type in site, S-I-T-E, colon, and then the URL for the publication warehouse. And this works for all um, Google um, truncation, so you could also just search for all of just USGS.gov, too, as well. Um, and I use this trick a lot, so you're still using the USGS Publications Warehouse, even if you're searching through Google. Um, and also, you can try their RSS feed. Um, they have this really great um, setup, so you can search by um, certain topics and set up a feed reader. So you can, if you're really interested in what a certain author is doing or what a, a geographical area, you can stay up to date with the publications. I use Feedly. That's my personal preference, but it's a nice way of aggregating all those resources. So you don't need to get an alert whenever a new resource comes up. Second to last, wouldn't be a proper librarian if I didn't talk about the library catalog. For some materials that are not in the USGS Publications Warehouse, you can search the catalog to see them. They're probably available in print. Um, th there are also some key government documents you can find in them. Now, the USGS Libraries has holdings of over um, 1.5 million books, um, maps, other paper records, even fossils and different things. Uh, if you ha ever have a chance, there's several different USGS Libraries. Um, one of them, one of the largest being in Denver, there's another one in Reston, Virginia. You can visit, you are able to visit, you have to have um, a, kind of a pass, you'll have to um, request a, a visit. This is what their, la their catalog looks like. So again, that one resource, uh, Map Proje Projections, a working manual, that is one of the most popular resources. You can see there's a lot of different copies that they have of it all um, online. Now these are the paper physical copies that are available. Um, and you can find the access to this library catalog through library.usgs.gov. Nearly lastly, before um, I wrap up, uh, one of the last things I want to talk about was just USGS social media. I know we're talking about finding geological um, materials through the USGS, but I use social media for some of the most up-to-date ways to find recently um, released um, USGS news releases and other things. Um, one of the, my favorite ways of doing it is mostly through Twitter. For the, those of you that are interested, you don't necessarily need to have an account because you can just go online and look to see what they're having. But they do do releases of, of memos um, and um, other funding projects, papers, reports, and um, the big ones they will release um, on Twitter and, and do a big announcement. This is all stuff that they, you know, it's another way for them to get the news out. There's also ways to do 
um, publication signups for listservs and other things. I wanted to talk about that final presentation question. At the very beginning, we talked about what happened when some students were asked uh, where um, to find information about their hometown, that is elevation, land cover, mining, watershed, and water features, and um, the oldest and newest topographic maps that are available, and as well as recent publications. If you're intrigued about finding about where you're from and you want to find more information, all of the resources I talked about today, you can find the answer to that um, question. So uh, just for fun, I wanted to show you about my hometown around Portland, Maine. And my mom happens to live right on the water in um, on a river going into the ocean. So it's a great example of, of looking for watershed analysis. So here's what I found in doing this presentation. Portland, Maine area, where my mom is. She's some, she lives somewhere in that land cover database map. Uh, her house is at 16 feet above sea level. Um, yes, I'm worried that it may flood. It does flood occasionally. The nearest mine is actually from the West Quarry, which is part of Pike Industries. And I found that information um, also through all these resources. And uh, I found an article about her area and the land flow of, um, of resources going to the car uh, Gulf of Maine. I found that information to the publication warehouse. Um, I also use the historical topographic map explorer to find several different maps of the area. I just took a screenshot instead of downloading them today, but I wanted to show that the screenshot showed the before and after, and in one case there the airport exists, and in the other case the airport doesn't exist. And you can also see the islands off the coast of Maine and how they've changed in size a little bit smaller now. Um, and then downloaded some materials from the USS Topo Zio and downloaded an, um, an actual real Topo map so I could show her how things used to look. And finally, um, I use the National Hydro um, Hydrography Dataset and USGS Streamer to do an analysis of some of the streams near my mom's house. Um, on the far right-hand side, you can see a little red line. That is the river my mom lives on. It's Stroud Rotter River, and it is 12 miles long. It goes right into the Atlantic Ocean. And now I can go back and tell with great confidence um, her some more information about her area. So all the resources we talked about today are listed here. Very much recommend the map view, the topo view, um, playing with the National Geographic map database. Um, you, I think, um, will spend some time maybe looking at your hometown and learning more about it. And if you're interested in learning more about each one of these individual resources, you could probably take lo very long online tutorials. Here's a snippet of a few more. And I'm rounding up towards the end of my time here. So if you have any questions, I'm going to stand by for the next little while on chat, and you can ask me them. Thank you very much, Hannah. That was great. I, w I was having quite a bit of fun with the uh, historical topographic map explorer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That and, really um, cool. Yeah, it's just a fun kind of slider for pe students to use. Most, most of the reasons why historically people have come to a map collection, or at least mine here at UNH, is that they students are looking for a topographic map. And what a joy they, they seem to have when I tell them, oh, I can show you the topographic map collection that we have, or we can sit down, I can show you the map explorer, and we can do a little bit of a search for um, your area and see, and see what happens. And um, I didn't really go into this way too much, but it's it is really nice to be able just to like do an overlay and show um, the panning and the viewing of everything. So, any other questions or comments? What's your favorite? There's a question about um, have we lost access to any map data? Is um, we have the EPA and agricultural department? Good things? question. I, I do not know that we have, and I've been keeping a pretty good ear to the ground, ask, um, asking around in, in anticipation for this presentation as well as from curiosity. I do not know that we have from maps. However, there is concern that future GIS data will be lost. Um, there are some bills in, in, um, that have been proposed that would no longer um, mandate geospatial data to be collected for uh, HUD uh, head economic data, for example, but not maps. Great. Okay. Well, 
<laughs> Unless anybody has any questions, um, I would just want to thank Hannah very much for uh, doing this. It was wonderful and definitely learned a lot of new resources that I can show my people today. Um, if you have any questions, I'm sure Hannah would love to uh, talk on email. All right, guys. Well, unless you have any questions, um, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. And hope you all have a great week.